Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Tin Woodman of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This is actually a reproduction of the original, apparently. Priced in the UK, £30.90. I didn't pay that, I got it on eBay for about three quid. But, um... I guess some people do. Now this doesn't include uh, a blurb, unfortunately, so I'm just gonna go straight on in and start checking out some of my tabs and then I'll share my overall thoughts and ratings at the end. So, Dane reads. And so basically this follows Nick Chopper, the Tin Woodman, as he recounts how he fell in love with a girl called Nimmy Amy, um, and then basically when he turned into a Tin Woodman, he lost his heart. And so he no longer wanted to marry her. And he realizes that the right thing to do is to see if she still wants to marry him. Um, but he's telling the story and he goes, I'm sure my dear Nick, said the brave and beautiful girl, my name was then Nick Chopper, you should be told, that you will make the best husband any girl could have. I shall not be obliged to cook for you, for now you do not eat. I shall not have to make your bed, for tin does not tire or require sleep. When we go to a dance, you will not get weary before the music stops and say you want to go home. All day long, while you are chopping wood in the forest, I shall be able to amuse myself in my own way, a privilege few wives enjoy. There is no temper in your new head, so you will not get angry with me. Finally, I shall take pride in being the wife of the only live tin woodman in all the world. Which shows that Nimmy Amy was as wise as she was, brave and beautiful. And uh, we get this as well, which is part of the lore. It kind of explains why people can't die in Oz. So in the land of Oz, replied the Emperor, no one can ever be killed. A man with a wooden leg or a tin leg is still the same man. And as I lost parts of my meat body by degrees, I always remained the same person as in the beginning, even though in the end I was all tin and no meat. So the tin man has a bit of wisdom here, he says. Beautiful things may be admired, if not loved, asserted the tin man. Flowers are beautiful, for instance, but we are not inclined to marry them. Duty, on the contrary, is a bugle call to action, whether you are inclined to act or not. In this case, I obey the bugle call of duty. His duty being to marry the woman he once loved, but now can't because he doesn't have a heart. And the Tim Woodman says he's noticed that the last end of a wait, however long it has been, is the hardest to endure. And uh, Woot, the boy, he gets his breakfast and he goes, you two miss a great deal by not eating. It is true, responded the scarecrow. We miss suffering from hunger when food cannot be had. And we miss a stomach ache now and then. And I'm just there like, God, I wish I didn't have to eat. That'd be so much easier. I'd be in a lot less pain all the time, and it would be less hassle, and it'd be cheaper. Uh, we meet the loons, and their leader is called Bal. His name is Baloon, and they're inflated by air. And we get a ref well, we pay a visit to Ginger, who was in the previous books. And so um, the scarecrow, who's been transformed into a bear, he's talking about her. He says, Ginger is a girl. She's a fine girl, too, although a bit restless and liable to get excited. Once, a long time ago, she raised an army of girls and called herself General Ginger. With her army, she captured the Emerald City and drove me out of it, because I insisted that an army in Oz was highly improper. But Ozma punished the rash girl, and afterward Ginger and I became fast friends. Now Ginger lives peacefully on a farm near here, and raises fields of cream puffs, chocolate caramels, and macaroons. They say she's a pretty good farmer, and in addition to that she's an artist, and paints pictures so perfect that one can scarcely tell them from nature. She often repaints my face for me when it gets worn or mussy, and the lovely expression I wore when the giantess transformed me was painted by Ginger only a month or so ago. It was certainly a pleasant expression, agreed Woot. Ginger can paint anything, continued the scarecrow bear, with enthusiasm, as they walked along together. Once, when I came to her house, my straw was old and crumpled, so that my body sagged dreadfully. I needed new straw to replace the old, but Ginger had no straw on all her ranch, and I was really unable to travel farther until I had been restuffed. When I explained this to Ginger, the girl at once painted a straw sack which was so natural that I went to it and secured enough straw to fill all my body. It was a good quality of straw too, and it lasted me a long time. Just again, that nice little bit of sur surrealism. And um, we meet up with Ozma and Dorothy, and um, here's another little bit about how, like, death works in Oz. Um, Oz was not always a fairyland, I am told. Once it was much like other lands, except it was shut in by a dreadful desert of sandy waste that lay all around it, thus preventing its people from all contact with the rest of the world. Seeing this isolation, the fairy band of Queen Lurline, passing over Oz while on a journey, enchanted the country and so made it a fairyland. And Queen Lurline left one of her fairies to rule this enchanted land of Oz, and then passed on and forgot all about it. From that moment, no one in Oz ever died. Those who were old remained old. Those who were young and strong did not change as years passed them by. The children remained children always, and played and romped to their heart's content, while all the babies lived in their cradles and were tenderly cared for and never grew up. So people in Oz stopped counting how old they were in years, for years made no difference in their appearance and could not alter their station. They did not get sick, so there were no doctors among them. 
Accidents might happen to some on rare occasions, it is true, and while no one could die naturally as other people do, it was possible that one might be totally destroyed. Such incidents, however, were very unusual, and so seldom was there anything to worry over that the Oz people were as happy and contented as can be. Alright, and then Ozma and Dorothy decide to go and meet up with everybody, and they get, uh, they, um, they get a, what is it, a red car? They get, a, yeah, the red wagon, and they set off in the red wagon, but I'm like, doesn't Ozma still have a magic belt? She could just wish that they were there. They wouldn't have to travel for weeks to meet up with them. All right, and then Woot says, I'm afraid something is going to happen. Why? asked Polychrome, dancing around the group of travellers. Because, said the boy thoughtfully, I've noticed that when we have the least reason for getting into trouble, something is sure to go wrong. Just now, the weather is delightful. The grass is beautifully blue and quite soft to our feet. The mountain we are seeking shows clearly in the distance, and there is no reason anything should happen to delay us in getting there. Our troubles all seem to be over, and... Well, that's why I'm afraid, he added with a sigh. Does, that is basically how it works in the Oz books. And then they find Nimi Amy, and she's basically married this Frankenstein monster created from bits of the Tin Woodman and bits of the Tin Soldier. Um, and they ask her if, if she wants to marry either of them, and she goes, basically goes, nah. A new husband would have to be scolded and gently chided until he learns my ways. So I think it would be better to keep my chop fight, and I see no reason why you should object to him. And Dorothy says it's a very good idea that she marries them, because if um, their cast-off parts hadn't been used to make this Frankenstein man, they would have been wasted. It's wicked to be wasteful, isn't it? Very true. Yeah, we should all make Frankenstein monsters. So yeah, The Tin Woodman of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Uh, this is the second in a row where I feel as though a little, the old, little bit of the old magic's back. I mean, it probably helps that it's got a lot of the original cast are all coming back to make appearances in this, but it doesn't feel forced because it's kind of part of the, the story. This is actually the first one in the whole series, really, where the title has been appropriate because this is all about The Tin Woodman, although obviously the other characters come along as well. Overall, did enjoy it. It was a solid 3.5 out of 5 for me, and I'm glad that the uh, series is picking up a little bit again. Although I think there are only two more left until L. Frank Baum died. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Tim Woodman of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.